So up to this point, we are able to get a random name out of the array. We were able to get the whole uh, array or one random item. What I want to do is get the array back, the name, the 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 uh, data out of the array again, but in a random order. Every time we click that, I want a different order. Right now. Show all is always going to give me the same order from the array. I want to choose a completely different order every time. Instead of just a random name, all the names, but randomly. Uh, we'll create another button and uh, have it show it. Uh, one quick thing before we proceed. I'm going to add a quick comment here because this, this line is pretty important, but I'll also comment it. This is create a random number. Create a variable for a random number. Between 0, which is math.floor, and uh, maximum amount of names, which is name len. So that's what that's doing. It's a random number, but it's bound by these limitations, zero and maximum number. And that was because of dot floor and name len. So now what we'll do is uh, create our button for displaying all the names randomly. We'll go back to our HTML portion. Uh, it's going to appear on the same line, but I'll press enter. Remember, unless we explicitly put in breaks or whatever, it'll appear on the same line. But I'm just moving it to the next line so I can see it, or else it's going to be a long line, kind of like uh, line 15. So I'm going to go to line 18, and this is another input button. Value. get all random ID btn random all <clears throat> so some button to make it do something with an ID so you can reference it I'm kind of being consistent although it's very easy to get inconsistent but I'm calling it btn random one random all I want to show all So uh, we'll do the same thing as we've done before in that we need that get element by ID code and then a function to define that. So at the end of my code, document.getElement by ID, the ID that we just typed, btm random all dot on click. That evaluates to a function which we'll call show name or name show random all. Find that function.
Okay, so um, this will be a little bit more complex because what we need to do is check all of the values in the array, all the names. And then what we need to do is select one of the names randomly to display on screen, and then, well, remove that name out of the array so that we have, you know, four left instead of five. So then out of those four, pick another random one, get that one out of the array, so now you've got three to choose from. Uh, randomly from there, and then another one, and then another one, and the last one. So now we're going to need to remove things from the array uh, so that we can display them on screen. Or else we would be randomly choosing a name every single time. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, that might be okay, but what we want to accomplish in like the example is display all the names in a random order. Not that we're getting the names randomly without and not counting that we've eliminated the old version. So what we need to do then inside the function, first to make sure I'm going to uh, clear the the placeholder, uh, the div placeholder, which is uh, line 66 accomplishes that. Line 66 blanks out my my div. So this get element by id div name show equal to nothing. I'm going to copy that and paste that as the first line of my show random all. Next line. I'm going to like create a temporary version of the array. I don't want to edit the original array because I said I'm going to remove things from the array but I want to do that to a copy of my array. So we'll create a new variable called all names tmp, a temporary version. This is going to be made from it would make sense to be all names, unfortunately. We, don't, we can't exactly make a copy by simply referring to that object <coughs> and putting it in this object. It'll do some weird things. So we have to use then a dot slice method. On this, just uh, basically trust me on this. And we have to say zero. Again, trust me on that. This is basically to copy the array. Take the original names and copy them into a new array, basically. Comma, enter. We're going to create another variable. All names temp len equals all names temp dot length. So if I'm creating a temporary array to work with, I need to check how many items are, the, are in the array because then I'll be removing items from the array. So here's our starting point, a, brand, a, a copy of my original list of names and how many items are in that <coughs> copy of the original array. Next line. I'm going to use another uh, control statement here, uh, conditional statement. We have to make a decision. Here we have to iterate. We have to do something over and over. We have five names, so display one of them. And we have four left. Okay, now display another one. So we've got three left. Now display another one. We need to do this several times. Then we need to do a loop. We will do this several times. And one way to do this is with a loop called the for loop, F-O-R, which has a structure or a skeleton like this. We 
this is going to be like um, for the number of items you're holding, do the following. Keep doing that until you're out of those things. We're going to define then the, the statement here in the parentheses. I'm going to create a variable at this point called i. Traditionally it's i. It could be anything we want. i for index. We're creating a variable called i. And then at this point we're setting it to all names templen. So I have five names to work with. So this is basically saying, as long as you have five names to work with, do the following. This is more complex because then we have to jump through these loops. So the only time you're, you're going to see something like this is with a for loop, because then we'll put a semicolon here. Even though the semicolon usually ends the statement, we're not done with the statement. Semicolon, because we're going to continue to add another parameter here, which is then i angle bracket greater than equals zero semicolon so two semicolons in one line this also continues to to check something we, we have a starting point of five names as long as we have more than zero names so you know five is greater than zero, so do it. Four is greater than zero, so do it again. Three is greater than zero, do it again. One is greater than zero. Is zero greater than zero? And then we get to negative numbers. Is negative one greater than zero? No. So then we stop. So as long as we have numbers to work with, names to work with, we, uh, we can process this. Space, one more item, i, minus, minus. This is the part then that lets us step to the next item, the next item, the next item. Oftentimes when you use a, a for loop, it's often at the end here, I++, plus plus, because oftentimes we're counting up. We're saying, do this, you know, 50 times. Var I equals 50. I less than 50. I++. Plus plus. We're going from 0 to 50. Uh, we're going upward to 50, then we're done. We're going to do it 50 times, then we'll stop. This is another way to do it. We're going to count downwards because we have, I don't know how many numbers. I have the number of names that the person puts. If I know we're going to get it up to 50, um, I could put 50, but if the person's going to put two names, it's going to be a variable. So here we're going to count upwards, uh, we're going to count downwards from our starting point. Next line inside of the four, we're going to create the, uh, the random uh, name again. We created name random in the other function. We can't use it here. You might say, well, why don't we create it as a global scope object? It may not behave as we think, especially with random numbers. So we're going to create the random number at the moment we need it equals this is basically going to be then, we know it's going to be math.floor. We're going to need to round down. Inside of the uh, floor method, we have then math.random method. And up at the top there, where we made our random number the first time, that was based on the length of the array, <coughs> name len. We don't have a name len variable anywhere here. But we have i, which is made from temp len. So we'll put i right there. Or I'm sorry, uh, times i, multiplied by i. Because again, the nature of this, we have five names to start off with, choose one random number. Next, we have four names to choose with, from. So now choose another random number up to four. Once we deal with that, we'll have three names. So now we have a random number, deal with it up to three, and then two, and then one, and then zero, and we're done. So we're creating a random number based on the changing array.
next line. We're going to display on screen document dot get element by ID in the div name show dot inner HTML. The reason I didn't copy and paste it was because it needs to be different than before. The first difference is we're going to do plus equals. Previously, whenever we had inner HTML equals, it basically said whatever's on the left, dump it out and put this into it. Replace what, what we're talking about with what our uh, value is. So everywhere else, like up, up here, whatever the random name currently is, dump it out and put a new random name. With plus equals, we're saying add to it. Uh, something's already there, add something more to it, because we're going to display the first random name, and then the next random name, and then the next random random name. We're going to add to whatever is there, plus equals. What we will add is, in quotes here, first a br. We're going to write the first name, break, the next name, break, the next name, break. Uh, instead of writing it all in a, one long sequence, we're going to have each one in, in its own line, space, plus, enter. All names temp dot splice. Now I said slice previously. This is splice. They do have a difference. This is what actually removes an item out of the array. Push adds an item to the array, and splice removes an item. There's another one I believe called pop. That's another way to remove an item from the array. The difference is, is it from the beginning or the end of the array? Don't worry about it. This is removing an item from the array. Um, the particular item then is name random. comma, space, one. The one, what does the one do again? That uh, removes an item from the array and shifts it over one, I believe. I believe that's what that is. Because we have five slots. We removed one item. Well, that slot is empty. Shift it over one to fill that empty spot. I believe, what that, I believe that's what that means. So take, an, take an item out and fill up that one empty space. space plus quotes, one more break, and then end of statement. All right, so a little bit more complex to then randomly display the list because we have to deal with a copy of the list of names, then we have to do something to each random name we need to pull those names out of the list so that we don't randomly show it again. I don't want it to show Joey twice. I want it to be Joey, then Johnny, etc. One at a time, so that's why I'm splicing, removing it from the array. And we have to do some other tricks to do all of that, and this uh, should work. Let's see. I'm going I'm to refresh it, put in some names. Get all random, random names, get them random again, random names, again, 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 again. So 
So a lot could go wrong here. Um, I'll do help in just a moment. I want to do one final thing, and then we'll wrap up. I'll, I'll put my code in the folder, of course, and I'll help people. If it didn't quite work, just wait a little bit more. We're going to do one more thing, and we'll wrap up for the day. But if it worked, whatever we put into the array, now we're getting it back randomly. There are a lot of things that could go wrong, and hopefully you're looking at your console output, and hopefully it's just a simple misspelling. Let's see, 64, that's kind of back up here. That was the hide all button. One last thing is that uh, we're, uh, we've got these items in the array, and I want to delete all the names. We, we don't have time at the moment to deal with you know, editing a misspelled name or editing one item and such. I want to see about deleting all the items of the array to start over. And yes, at the moment, what I could do is a refresh, and the whole browser refreshes everything. But I, I, when it's an if this were an app, there's no you, you can't refresh it exactly. So the last thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do is uh, set it up so that I clear, so that I empty the the names. I'm going to um, make a new button. Delete names. I want to delete all the names. So we'll, we'll make a new button. We've got show all, hide names, delete names. We'll get back to line 15. We have the show all button. We have the hide names button. I want to make a new button called delete names. So at the end of line 15, a new input. Type button. Value delete names. ID BTN delete all. So on line 15, we'll add one more button. We need to do the document get element by ID and function dance again. So all the way at the end. Document dot get element by ID. The BTN delete all element on click function. Trading braces. Call it uh, delete names.
Okay, um, the concept here is that the person will click the button and it will ask them, are you sure? Because if this, if, if we don't put any checks here, it'll just do it and say, whoops, I deleted all the names. And at the moment, we don't have any way to undo it. We haven't programmed in any of that. In any other software where you have, you know, undos and all of that is because they programmed it to have a safety net. Right now, we have no safety net. We delete the array, we deleted the array. The names are gone. We can't bring them back. So instead, we will do a little simple, you know, user check to say, are you sure? And if then they say yes, okay, then they're gone. If they say, never mind, cancel, they're still safe. This is going to be another conditional statement. We need to check a condition for, you know, true or false. Um, this is a different one. We had if else before. Here's another one that we can use. This one is known as the switch condition. This is like to check because the if else really basically is either or. Um, switch can let us check a variety of things. Is it this or is it this or is it this or is it this? The way the syntax is, so inside of delete names, we write switch, open close parentheses, open close curly braces, This one has a very interesting syntax because in the switch part we're going to check, is it this possibility? We're going to first ask, what are the possibilities? Then we're going to say, is it this possibility, this one, this one, this one, or this one? And those inside here are going to be case. We'll just write it like this for the moment. Case AAA colon something semicolon, break, semicolon, is not valid code yet. I'm showing you the syntax, case, bbb, something else, break, case, you know, some other possibility, colon, something else, break. We can have one or a thousand lines in each of these cases, in each of these possibilities. That section then ends with a break. If this possibility is the one that gets triggered, it runs these steps and then it stops and it skips everything else. If, if we didn't program it, but if the possibility is D, 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 we never programmed it, and I don't want to do it all the way D to Z, so the, possi the final possibility could be the default possibility. If all else fails. It's not valid code, of course. Uh, I don't think we need a break there, but I usually put it just as a habit. I guess we don't really need it because it's the final, final possibility. So then the block end. This is, this then in total is the switch statement. Switch conditional statement. Ask a possibility. based on answer executes a case remains. If no case was made, goes to default. So this one's a pretty cool uh, way to check for something, although the, the work, the onus is on you that you have to think of the possibilities that the person could reply. Right now, it's going to be a very easy one of just true and false, but if we get more advanced, like let's say later on when we talk about 
uh, developing our app, which will be multi-platform, we can use Switch to check, are we on an iPhone? Are we on an Android phone? Are we on a BlackBerry? Well, then there's case iPhone, case Android, case BlackBerry, and it'll run special code in that case. The special you know, iPhone code will not run at all because it's not in that particular case block. I do then have to think of the possibilities, and if I don't, I have default just in case the final possibility. What we're asking for here is we're going to get a pop-up that says, are you sure you want to delete everything? So inside of Switch, we will type confirm. We have a built-in JavaScript method called confirm. It will ask a simple question. Yes or no, would you like to do this? The question is in quotes, whatever you'd like to ask it. The user. I'm going to say about to delete all names. Proceed. That's what will pop up. That's what the user will be asked. They will have OK. They will have Cancel. Confirm does that by default. We'll have other ways that are more complex, but Confirm creates a pop-up, like an alert. An alert has an OK, and that's it. A Confirm has an OK and a Cancel. If the person chose OK, they read the disclaimer and they want to proceed, the return value will be true. So we have a case of true. Or else they click cancel, so then the return value will be false. There actually is no C result. You can leave it if you want. It won't do anything, but I will delete C. We have either a true result or a false result. And again, using other code later on, we will check what kind of phone are we running. So the case could be BlackBerry. The case could be iPhone. The case could be Windows. The case could be Mac. If it's true, if they did decide, OK, let's, de let's, let's delete these names, the real code will be all names equals empty array. All the names are gone. And I want to delete, well, we have a function for that. We have the name clear function. I also want to clear the names. If any, if any names were being displayed at the moment, and they deleted all the names, well, they're deleted in the array, but they're still on screen. So we have a function that we invented that will clear the names on screen. That's another reason why we use functions. We've basically been using them one-to-one. -one. Click this one button, run this one function. But when we invent a function like name clear or delete names, we can run that function whenever we want. Just like whenever we want, we can use alert. Or whenever we want, we can use switch. They're, they're defined. We defined name clear, and therefore we can run it, we can use it whenever we want, just call its name in this way. And then we'll give some user feedback, an alert, all names deleted. Have a nice day. the false, then a person canceled it, they decided, never mind, I don't want to delete it. Uh, here, I could also give an alert saying, okay, thank you for not deleting the names, or I could do nothing. So, nothing. If the false happens, nothing will happen, literally. Comment, nothing. The user doesn't get any feedback. They cancel, they press cancel, they kind of know what they did. If you want to be obvious, we could have a message display via alert or a message that we display in the little div. And then on uh, the default, um, nothing for the moment. It's not a very complex question. If we were dealing with what kind of device are we running? 
then we'd want to put some console output because, okay, it wasn't the Android, it wasn't the iPhone, it wasn't the Blackberry, what was it? So we'll give ourselves some console output to figure that out. But for the moment, false or default don't really do anything. Uh, also, one more thing to confirm, uh, back up here, console.log, all names. This is for us to the developers. We're going to see this in the console. We should see an empty array in the console, and then the user will see the pop-up that says you've deleted everything. Maybe for the, maybe for the case of false, just to output ourselves something. Okay if they canceled it, the array should be intact, display it, the name should be there. This is again to kind of maybe help us for future debugging. And for the default, let's put let's output the array again. It couldn't hurt, it's going to the console, the user won't see that. Let's save it and run it, let's give it a try. Put items in the array, open your console, and then press the delete button. Let's see. I'm going to add some items to the array. Delete names, pop up. About to delete all names. I'm going to cancel. Okay, I cancel it. My output is there's your array, nice and safe. Okay, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to delete the array. This time, yes, okay. All names deleted. Have a nice day. My array is empty. Let's say I had added some names and I chose to show the names and then delete the names and click OK. That was the point of clearing out the div because we've told the user. We've deleted the names. Well, then why are they still on screen? That's why we put that first line there. Um, uh, that's why we also put name clear. Hide that div. We're just about out of time. I'll answer your question in one moment. We're just about out of time, but here's one more possibility. What if a person loads the, the file at this point without entering anything, and they click Delete Names? About to delete name. What names? Click OK. You deleted all names. What names? I never put in any names. This is an example, again, of putting a little bit more effort in like user testing to say if they're trying to delete a name that doesn't exist, it should say something like, no names exist, please enter a name. We're out of time to do that, but remember, check the, the example. But this is the part about, we have to think of these possibilities. Uh, I like to say, you know, you, uh, it's very hard to write foolproof code. There's so many ingenious fools out there. Question? We're going to do uh, lab time to help in just a moment. So any general questions up to this point? Again, what we did here is a variation. If you want to leave it in your notes, vmcinc.net slash random. You know, it's a little bit different than what we ended up today. It's the same thing in general. You can view source there if you'd like. I'm going to put my version of the code that I ended up with into the network folder in just a moment because it's a little different. I didn't use field set and legend. Do you see how it's a little bit different? The field set and the legend? Just cosmetics. Functionality-wise, it works just about the same. Actually, it's also a little bit different in that if you do save items in the array, each one is displayed in its own space. We didn't do that, but you can look at the code. We're going to wrap up at this point. We'll have some lab time, and then we'll do it again on Tuesday.